How to consolidate? That's the basic question of almost every accounting student because consolidation is simply the basic thing examined during any exam. And even if you have no exam in front of you, but you still want to excel in your job or get a new one, the consolidation is exactly one of that advanced techniques that differentiates you from your debit and credit accountant. In this video, I'll show you very clear demonstration of basic consolidation procedures so that you have a good starting point for more demanding issues. I am Sylvia, the founder of IFRS Box, and if you'd like to learn more about this topic, including lots of examples with many complications, and if you need to learn IFRS and you want to do it easily with lots of fun, then you're welcome to check my web, ifrsbox.com, my courses, quizzes, and many more. So let's read a text of our case study. Mummy Corporation has owned 80% shares of Baby Limited since Baby's Incorporation. So here it's kind of clear that Mummy is a parent and Baby is a subsidiary. And no, the names are not coincidence. I just wanted you to remember very well who is who. Below there are statements of financial positions of both Mummy and Baby at 31st December 20x4. Prepare consolidated statement of financial position of Mummy Group as at 31st December 20x4. Note: Measure non-controlling interest at its proportionate share on baby's net assets. This one is a very, very basic example and we will solve it in a very straight and clear way. Well, we'll do it step by step, exactly as described in the standard IFRS 10 consolidated financial statements. The first step is to combine like items of assets, liabilities, equity, income, expenses and cash flows of the parent with those of its subsidiaries. OK, so let's do it. Well, here it's obvious that both balance sheets or the statements of financial position have the same format, the same line items. So it's very easy to add everything up line by line. In reality, a parent can use format of the statement of financial position different from its subsidiaries one. And this is exactly one of the reasons why subsidiaries prepare all these consolidation packages at the reporting dates. Step number two, we need to offset or eliminate carrying amount of parents investment in a subsidiary with parents portion of equity of each subsidiary and recognize any non-controlling interest and goodwill. OK, so we'll do this eliminating entry in the separate column. Just as a side note here, for the sake of simplicity and illustration, I make all debit entries with plus and all credit entries with minus. You can know the same with assets. They are plus and liabilities and equity. They are minus. We credit mummy's investment in full, so we put minus 70,000 here. Then we debit baby's share capital in full, we put plus 80,000 here. So yes, consolidated statement of financial position will still show only the share capital of mummy and zero for baby, even if it's not owned fully by mummy. Okay, now, we have other components of baby's equity that do not belong to mummy and we need to eliminate them. Here, there are just retained earnings of 45,000, all post acquisition. What well, post acquisition means that retained earnings were generated after mummy acquired baby, okay? Well, how do we know that they are all post acquisition? Well, the question says that mommy acquired baby's shares right on its incorporation. So since baby's beginning, well, let's not complicate things with pre acquisition things, but you should remember that you need to differentiate between the pre acquisition and post acquisition equity. So we need to eliminate a part of baby's post acquisition retained earnings too. Well, what part? Well, 20% because this belongs to non-controlling interest. So we debit retain earnings with plus 20% times 45,000. That is 9,000. And finally, we need to recognize non-controlling interest at the reporting date. Let's calculate it here below in the separate note or working. 
The question asks to measure non-controlling interest at its proportionate share on net assets. So baby's net assets are 125,000, which is baby's equity. Non-controlling interest share is 20%. So the amount of non-controlling interest is 25,000. And we can bring this amount to our entry as minus 25,000. This is the equity component, that's why it's minus, and we recognize it as credit. Well, and when you look here below to our checksum, the entry is still not balanced, because otherwise there would be zero, right? This means that there was some goodwill. Well, if these terms like goodwill or non-controlling interest are not that clear for you, please check my articles and videos about IFRS 3 on my web and in this channel. In this example, goodwill is calculated as fair value of consideration transferred. Here in the mummy's balance sheet, it's a cost of investment in baby, 70,000. We add non-controlling interest at acquisition date, which is 20% of baby's equity at the acquisition date. So it's not the same non-controlling interest as above, because above there's a current non-controlling interest on the reporting date. As all the reserves or baby's retained earnings are post-acquisition, then at the acquisition date, baby had just share capital of 80,000 and 20% of that is 16,000. That's non-controlling interest at acquisition measured by the proportionate share method. Finally, we can deduct baby's net assets at acquisition. Again, just share capital of 80,000. And when we add it up, Goodwill is 6,000, so we need to recognize it as intangible asset, goodwill acquired in a business combination. And in this case, don't forget to perform annual impairment test of goodwill. See, our entry is balanced now. Check some below the table shows zero, so we are okay. Step number three is to offset or eliminate in full intragroup assets, liabilities, equity, income and expenses and cash flows relating to transactions between companies in the group. Because from the point of view of external users to the group, there is no transaction. So when you look here, mommy has a receivable to baby amounting to 8000. And baby has a payable to mommy amounting to 8000. So how do we eliminate it? We simply debit payables with 8,000 and credit receivables with the same amount. The last column is Mummy Group's consolidated statement of financial position, right? So we simply add the combined numbers with the adjustments and okay. So now look, mommy's financial investment in baby is zero. So is the baby's share capital? And that's great, that's okay. Now, group retained earnings show some strange number here because this is not simple addition of mommy plus baby. So group's retained earnings should be equal to mommy's retained earnings of 62,000. Then mommy's share on baby's post-acquisition retained earnings, which are full retained earnings in this case, and that is 80% of 45,000, which is 36,000. And um, that's it. There was no other consolidation adjustment. So we can add it up and we get 98,000, which is exactly the same amount as in our consolidated balance sheet. Well, everything else in this balance sheet makes sense. Non-controlling interest is 25,000 as we calculate it. Goodwill is 6,000, that's okay. And other balances seem to be okay too. Now, this was a demonstration of a very, very simple case study and it's a very logical way of doing the things. During the exam, you would usually do it in the other style. You would just calculate everything in workings, as I did here below, and you would simply enter these numbers to consolidate its statement of financial position without all these columns. This is okay and up to you. Use this method if it's better for you, but warning, 
While it's wonderful for the exam, it's not so wonderful in the real life when there is much more transactions and if you want to calculate consolidated retain earnings, for example, then you can easily forget something and as a result, the numbers will not balance. Therefore, I prefer doing it this accounting sort of way. However, you can visit my website, look for the article example how to consolidate and download the Excel file where I solve the same case study by both ways, this way and the exam style way. If you're interested in more detailed explanation of the group accounting or our case studies, examples teaching you how to prepare consolidated financial statements with more demanding issues, please check out our IFRS kit or subscribe for free weekly newsletter at ifrsbox.com. Bye-bye and thanks for watching.